Now there's been an absolute slew of budget smartphones hit in the UK lately, very stiff competition indeed, but if your budget's around the £200 mark you might be intrigued by the Oppo A72. The A72 will cost you 220 quid SIM free right now from the likes of Carphone Warehouse and it seems to be a spiritual successor of sorts to the excellent A9 2020 from last year. You once again get a mighty 5000 milliamp battery, get a full HD display, stereo speaker setup and some really solid all round specs. But that's enough banging on about it, let's actually whip it out of the box take you on a full-on tour of the hardware and the software so you know exactly what to expect if you fancy throwing some money at Oppo for the A72. And for more on the latest greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. Of course, challenge one, as always, is actually getting into the bloody box. Bear in mind, if you ever want to review tech, not to bite your fingernails because cellophane will basically become your worst nightmare. Victory! Ah, oh, God. Oh, certainly packed on there nice and tight. All right, let's see what you get in the box. Of course, you have the obligatory condom case uh, to wrap around the Oppo A72 and help keep it protected. We've got the smartphone itself, just stick that aside for a second. If you bag the A72 here in the UK, of course, you get your three pin adapter, bit of Type C USB action. You even get a bundled pair of earphones as well, which is pretty generous. They're just the hard shell type, no soft silicone tips, so they are going to be proper ear scrapers, no doubt, but all the same for a bundled pair of uh, freebies, not bad at all. So here we have it, the Oppo A72. And as you can see, this is a lovely, colourful little number. This is the Aurora Purple version, although you can grab it in Twilight Black if you prefer something a bit more sedate. And it does feel like these colours are used an awful lot on budget smartphones, the sort of turquoisey blue and of course purple and all of that. But you know what, it's nice to have something a bit more vivid, a bit more vibrant, something that stands out. And there's very little official information from Oppo on what the A72 is actually constructed from, but it certainly feels like a plastic headset. There's a bit of flex in the back end when you apply pressure right there, uh, but not to a troublesome degree. It certainly feels reasonably solidly constructed. And around the front, the display of the Oppo A72 is actually already covered in a pre-installed screen protector so that should help to uh, just save it from any little scratches and scuffs and everything when you're using it. So definitely no real shocks or surprises as far as the design of the Oppo A72 goes. It's a 6.5 inch beast so again pretty much average for 2020. Got a decent heft to it around 200 grams. There is an edge mounted fingerprint sensor on the side of the uh, Oppo A72 as well though which is definitely making a bit of a comeback in 2020. Great to see. I'm a big fan of them so happy for that. Uh, let's just give it a bit of a poke now and see if we've got any juice in the tank. Yes, we do. All right, so we're going to get this bad boy all set up and then we'll take a proper full-on tour of the hardware and software. Oh, and great news when you're sticking your SIM card in as well because you do have full dual SIM support, as you can see there, as well as space for a micro SD memory card to expand the 128 gigs of onboard storage. Huzzah! Alrighty, so the Oppo A72 is all set up, ready for action. I've downloaded all of my apps. What you've got here is, of course, version 10 of Android. You've got a bit of ColorOS 7.1 slapped on top there as well to add all kinds of bonus features and other extra bits. So it's basically the same setup as every other Oppo smartphone on there. You've got all the great Android bits, such as, of course, a good bit of dark mode action, dive into convenience tools, got the navigation buttons. We can add a bit of a swipe navigation as well to get rid of that pesky navigation bar. But of course, you've got loads of bonus color rest features on there as well. Unfortunately, most of them are sort of hidden away a bit in this rather cluttered and messy settings menu. But for instance, you've got full face and lock to supplement the uh, rather excellent edge mounted fingerprint sensors. You can see there, it's nice and nippy and responsive. Certainly seems to be very dependable so far. But for instance, if you've got uh, mucky hands or you're wearing gloves or something, you can just get a bit of face and lock on the go. And as you can see there, nice and swift as well. And the good news is that all of the features you would expect to find, even on a £200-ish priced smartphone, are present and correct, like NFC for your contactless payments and a good bit of dual-band Wi-Fi support too. Now let's check out that 6.5-inch Full HD display. It's an IPS panel, of course, and it looks pretty damn stunning, to be fair, for a budget display. Colours looking quite natural there, so reasonable contrast for an IPS panel as well. Viewing angles and everything's certainly fine, and on that top brightness, it should be absolutely fine for outdoors use as well. Certainly not one of the most vibrant panels around, but it's pretty common for a budget IPS uh, display, so then generally those vivid hues don't exactly shine through. But, you know, for a bit of Netflix, you just want to kick back with a movie, something like that, it will do the job. And it's just a dinky wee punch hole camera effort here in the, uh, the top corner as well. So very unintrusive, barely uh, gets in on the action at all. Uh, and of course, you can block it out as well in the display settings if you do find it particularly offensive. And like the Oppo A9 2020 before, it's great to see the Oppo A72 has a dual stereo speaker setup here as well. Quite rare at the sort of budget price point. Uh, and even quite a lot of premium smartphones don't rock that. So let's just check it on out, yeah, boost the, the volume. 5.3 makes do with a pretty perfunctory design. At this budget price point, there's clearly not much cash to go on frills or flare of any 
any kind. So sure, the output is a bit tinny on those top volumes. Again, this is a budget blow. What do you expect? Uh, but it certainly seems like it would be loud enough to cut through a lot of background clamor. If you're working in a noisy kitchen, something like that, you should be able to, you know, have it propped up watching a video or something like that. You've also got some control over the audio output as well. You've got what is termed here real sound technology. So basically, similar to the uh, the smart Dolby output, as you can see there, it can automatically adjust depending on whether you're kicking back with a flick, blasting your way through a game, or whatever, and you can also manually set it to whatever you want as well. You got support for high res audio. You can stream over Bluetooth 5.0, and of course, you've got that bottom mounted headphone jack as well. Great stuff. Now, power on the Oppo A72 is Qualcomm Snapdragon 665 chipset backed by 4 gigs of RAM. You'll find this on lots of other budget blows out there, including the likes of the Nokia 5.3, some more expensive stuff as well, like the Sony Xperia 10 Mark II. And I found that this is absolutely fine for your everyday shenanigans. You know, you can split screen mode with apps, all kinds of stuff. If you're into your benchmarking, there's the results I got from here. Pretty standard for the Snapdragon 665 chipset. Should be able to play the latest games like Call of Duty and PUBG Mobile, no problem as well, although not on the sort of lower to medium detail settings. And you gamers, of course, have the Game Space app on board as well, which basically just adds a whole bunch of tools. Oh, I forgot to turn that volume down, didn't I? Yeah, this adds a whole heap of uh, game related features. So, for instance, you can give the performance a little boost if you need to. Yeah, you can block notifications mid game so you're not getting disturbed, all kinds of stuff. But yeah, stay tuned for my full in depth Oppo A72 review to see if it really does handle that gaming well. So you definitely expect respectable performance from the A72, but one of the other definite highlights is the 5000 milliamp battery packed inside, a match for the likes of the Moto G8 power and a couple of other budget handsets. But that should easily provide a full day of intensive use and probably give you the best part of two days of use as well, as long as you don't absolutely hammer the crap out of it. And when it is time to power up the Oppo A72 as well, it's got 18 watt fast charging on there, so not exactly uh, gonna blow your b off or anything like that, but respectable enough. So let's finish up as always by taking a look at the camera tech and slapped on the back end of the Oppo A72 is a quad lens arrangement, getting pretty fashionable these days, even for budget friendly smartphones. And what you have here is a 48 megapixel primary lens, an eight megapixel ultra wide angle lens, and then dual two megapixel portrait lenses. So it's actually a fairly similar camera setup to the Oppo Find X2 Lite, which is of course a bit more pricey. Uh, so nice and quick and easy to take your photos. You've got the usual toggles to play with, including HDR and a good bit of the dazzle color. If you want to just make those uh, punchy colors just that little bit more punchy, I tend to leave that off because it tends to overdo things. And you've got the various filters you can play around with as well. If you want to swap to good old portrait mode, of course you've got those dual portrait uh, lenses on the back there and that just helps to add a bit of depth uh, while also giving you a bit of filter effect action too. So for instance, you can shoot a sexy bit of black and white portrait if you want to uh, get all 1930s. You've got various other uh, modes that you can play around with as well, including of course the obligatory sticker modes. It's a good one if you want to make yourself look all purdy. And you've also got a proper full on pro mode as well if you want to mess around with the lights of the ISO levels, the white balance, get a very precise kind of shot. If you want to swap to that 8 megapixel ultra wide angle lens, just a quick tap here and voila. It doesn't look like the colors are quite as rich with that one, uh, but again, that's quite a common symptom of ultra wide angle lenses in budget blows. And you can also digitally zoom nice and easy, like so. Apparently, uh, baby symbol line here is food, according to the AI. Uh, not so sure about that. Pretty sure this guy's at the top of the food chain. And if you want to shoot video, you can do that up to 4K resolution as well. Let's just dive down here. We've got video resolution, it's in 1080p by default. But as you can see there, you can switch it up to 4K. And then last up, flip around, you've got a 16 megapixel front facing selfie cam with a neat little light band effect there, as you can see when you swap to it. And hopefully that should prove absolutely fine for your everyday selfies. You've got, of course, full portrait snaps and all of that shenanigans as well, if you like it. And is it me or do I just get sexier in every video? Oh yeah. And that right there, in a nutshell, is the Oppo A72. Seems to offer pretty good value for money for just a smidge over 200 quid here in the UK. Certainly if your priority is strong back battery life and of course you've got the full HD screen, hopefully dependable performance and everything as well. It'll definitely tick all of those boxes but stay tuned for my full in-depth Oppo A72 review for what I really think of this smartphone. It'd be great to hear your own thoughts down in the comments below. Please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell if you haven't already and have yourselves a lovely rest of the day. Cheers everyone, love you!